Welcome everybody to SEO Office Hours. My name is Michael Chidsey. I'm an SEO here at Good Signals. And part of what we do along with special guests are these Office Hours sessions where people can jump in and ask their questions around their website and web search. By the way, nobody here is in the hot seat. We might not know all the answers, but multiple heads thinking about a problem should help. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions already submitted, as you can see. But if there's anybody that would like to jump in and ask questions, they can. Just let us know in the chat functionality and we will prioritise you. Uh, like every week, with me today is Joe Juliana Turnbull. Thank you very much, Mike, uh, for having us on the show today and also arranging this SEO office hours. Yes, I'm Joe Juliana Turnbull, and I run a digital marketing, remote digital marketing consultancy here from Barcelona called Turn Global. And I also run some events, uh, Search London, Search Barcelona. And I'll be talking about that this, this in today's session. I'm really pleased to have on the show today, Ulrika and Crystal. So they've actually both been at an international search summit in November. Uh, I'm currently wearing the jumper of International Social Summit. It's the same company, but certain that organized international search and international social. And both Ulrika and Crystal actually are won the web search medallion for best speaker. So thank, uh, you. <laughs> thank you very much. They're great people to have on the show. <laughs> really proud of that because there were so many amazing speakers there. Literally, everyone was brilliant. It was a great event. I highly recommend if you're in Barcelona next year. Definitely. Yeah, it's, it's great to go. And so Crystal Carter actually is a UK Search Awards judge. She's actually just been to the UK Search Awards, which she'll talk to us about a bit later. She's currently head of communications at Wix. Uh, she's a very busy SEO professional because she works full time, but she also speaks at many webinars and podcasts and is speaking at MozCon next year which is very exciting i think i at first met crystal at the women in tech seo event a few years ago where she has been a speaker and always shares her tips and advice to many in the women in tech seo slack community and orika i'm very pleased to introduce we first met i think a few years ago as well it was all sort of in the pandemic we met one another and orika is the founder of her own seo agency unicorn it's based in sweden and she has her own team there and she works with large e-commerce b2c's and medium b2b sites um and she's also a organizer of her own event global seo club and they actually have an event it's an online event next tuesday yes december the 5th and as well as that she's also uh, a speaker at brighton seo smx events and also on podcasts like digital mark and i didn't pronounce that right digital what was it called uh, I think it's marketing, but in Swedish. Digital marketing like in Swedish. Marketing or something like that. <laughs> and Majestic's SEO one in 2023. So great speakers we have on today. And uh, thank you very much to everyone that's joined us as well. Anders, Varsha, Oksana, Isaac, Sophie. Really welcome you to our SEO office hours. And mm -hmm. also for those that are going to be watching it after when we upload it onto YouTube. So I'll pass it back over to you, Mike. Cool. Well, I was actually going to ask everybody about this week, because obviously we had Search London, Search Barcelona, UK Search Awards, which Crystal went to last night. I think the only one of us. Who did well yesterday, Crystal? Uh, can you remember? I think Blue Array won quite a few awards. I think that and they tend to do well. And I think they're such a big agency and they've got a great team there. But they're but literally as, as a judge. All of the folks who are submitting to to the awards are doing amazing work. If you ever get the opportunity to judge, it's, it's really amazing to see what some folks are doing. And yeah, it just makes you really proud to be in the industry to see some of the work that the folks are executing out there. Oh, so I didn't realize you were a judge for it. That's amazing. So um, even though this wasn't a question, is there any tips you can give anybody that works in SEO if they're, if they're submitting their work for an award? What would you yes. recommend? So if, Sorry, you're submitting work for a, so if you're submitting your work for an award, make sure that you take all of the boxes that are related to the word. That can be a deal breaker, even if you have like good ideas, even if you have great things, if you don't actually fulfill the criteria for, for the award, like when people are discussing it, that can be a, be a deal breaker. So absolutely. And I can see Ulrika is also nodding there as well. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really important to follow the instructions. <laughs> make sure you cover everything. The other thing I would say is that try to put as much into your award application as possible. Some people have like supplements and things over here and things over there. Try to put just put as much into your awards award application as possible because it makes it easier for people to see a coherent thread 
as it were. Well, we can, you've got some nodding. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, I totally agree. I'm judging in the global search awards and the EU search awards. And yeah, that is def definitely true. Put everything into the actual application and you can use, even if you just copy paste in imageries, do that because I know there's a limited number of like characters you can use, etc. but you can always use like images. It, it helps us massively. And also prove everything that you're saying, you have to have proof in there that this is actually, we can't really check if this is properly true, but at least if you have a print screen of your data that helps us massively. And we will tend to not really just go by, oh, and then we made the, the client super happy and we grew with the, the traffic by 300 percentage, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but where's the graph for that? And where's yeah. the uh, quote, etc. Yeah. yeah, put everything and be very transparent. I thought as well, you can't, sorry, I was just going to say, because I was just in, in the in previous years, I thought as well, you can't put like the 300%, you're supposed to put the actual numbers, right? Yeah. So that it's really clear because you could say 300% and you grew from like zero to... <laughs> zero to three, 300%. <laughs> it went up and to the right i didn't lie <laughs> no, it's um i also just want to say we have an international seo office hours today so we already have people calling in from spain uk sweden india so just also put in the chat so let us know where you're dialing in from today oh awesome. buenos dias and then we also had search london and we had Search Barcelona. So you let me take the reins of Search London, Joe, and co-host alongside Tim. And it was really good, actually. We had stuff about GA4. We had the guys from Incubator talking about seamless SEO and PPC. And then we also had, oh, what was the other talk? It was around collaboration. And that, that was really good from Juro. How was Search Barcelona? Yeah, it was very good, actually. We had a great turnout. We had about 35 people. It was at my co-working called Mob Barcelona, right in the center. And we had uh, people coming from all different nationalities. We had from UK, Spain, Nigeria, I think Poland, Australia, South Africa. We actually have, we had Isaac Diaz speak. We had Jermaine Scott and Anu as well. And actually we have Isaac on joining us at office hours as well. So hello, Isaac. Hey. <laughs> Cool. I, I think we everyone. should probably... Oh, sorry. Go for it. I just going to say hello, everyone. <laughs> hey. It's not yeah. my day to speak. I think Ulrika and Crystal do it much better than me. So. <laughs> no, yours is very good. Yours, it was a very good talk. So if anybody wants to do international bank transfers, use WISE. WISE is a great uh, account. Uh, there we go. Look at that on message. I think we should jump into the yeah. questions because we've got loads. And as I said, if anyone else has questions, feel free to... Um, put them into the chat or just flag yourself. Okay, so the first one is actually from somebody that I think was trying to spot whether a brand had been hit by a core update or had been impacted, I shouldn't really say hit. And they've basically said, I think it's okay to say the brand because they weren't, so it, it's fine. I, w I wouldn't usually otherwise. But ba basically, they've just Googled the, the website and it doesn't appear to be ranking for its brand terms. So Love Honey or Love Space Honey, only the help subdomains and also retailers that stock their products. And for anybody that doesn't know Love Honey, it basically is like a retailer that uh, sells adult toys and things like that. And so I cheated a little bit on this one where I actually have the SEO manager from Love Honey just on my LinkedIn. So I thought I'd just ask them. And this is actually because of Safe Search. And it's not that they've been impacted by a core update or anything like that. It's basically the way Google's obviously categorizing their website and categorizing the site as, say, pornography or, or something similar like that. And so actually, I thought I would then, so that answers that question, but I thought I would switch the question and just ask everybody that if you were in this situation and you were, say, the SEO of a brand that might be impacted by Safe Search, what would you do? Crystal, are you happy to start? Yeah. Can I share my screen? Yeah, of course. Let me just make sure. Let me set it up so you can. So I'm going to go. actually use Love Honey because I did some research on this. I'm going to show you all my notion, which is going to be super beautiful but I, this is if I was this person if I was this SEO the first thing I would do is go to LinkedIn so I basically google them and their knowledge panel says this love honey sex toy company right so then I looked at competitors right so love love honey's one of their competitors is Ann Summers theirs is retail company right 
So then I looked at another one, Lilo, which I don't have here. So I'm just going to show that. Look. Theirs is manufacturing company. Now they are in the same industry, but theirs is manufacturing industry, manufacturing company. And if I go to their Wikipedia page, Love Honey says industry sex toys, which is not an entity on Wikipedia. Lilo says industry consumer goods. And then on here, they say they're, they manufacture, et cetera. And then Ann Summers is retail company there and their industry says retail. So to my mind, what they need to do, or the first thing that I would try if I was them is to update their Wikipedia page, which would therefore update their knowledge panel to take them out of this sex toy company uh, category and put them into something more relevant or is there something that's safer and is also like more in line with what their competitors are doing because their competitors are still getting these brand searches and they're, and they're not. So that's what I would do. It's always worth, um, in my opinion, when you have things like this to look at the SERP, investigate the SERP. Um, and particularly if, if Google is categorizing your entire yeah. company, have a look at how your knowledge panel, how your business entity is lining up. Cool. I totally agree. Does anybody else want to add anything? That's fascinating. So we're talking about the imagery, etc. before as well for the safe search. I think that this is uh, going to have a bigger impact because I, I think that the, the structured data and what it comes from the knowledge panel and uh, Wikipedia is has a much heavier impact on how Google will uh, categorize the company. Than, rather than the images. It's good also to not have two graphic imagery <laughs> to, yeah. so that they are not caught with safe search. But I think this is more important. This is going to be way like more, have a, way more impact for them. Yeah. So good change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think also that a thing like that, I think it's a fairly low risk as well. So yeah. like if you update, that's gonna, that's a fairly low risk change. You can update that. You can monitor that and see if it changes anything. And mm. see if it impacts it, it impacts anything, but it's not like impacting something on your site. It's impacting something across your knowledge panel. I think I'd probably also make sure that we claim to our knowledge panel and again, align all of your structured data, as you mentioned, on your site to connect with any updates you need there. So it could be that you make it manufacturing or something to that. Effect. Exactly. <clears throat> What's quite interesting in their situation is one of their subdomains actually does appear. So it's like help, love, honey, and so on. And so that also could be an alternative if they're just not having any, any luck looking at creating like maybe a partner, partner website or subdomain or something like that with slightly different content that if it is down to imagery or anything like that, just changing what you present, I should say. Yeah. So I think that's also worth looking at. So I think that for industries that are a little bit sensitive or that Google is a bit sensitive to, I know people who work in the CBD industry and Google mm -hmm. has like sensitive things around that. So sometimes they, I think there's, I think there's particularly ad restrictions on some of it and there's certain things there. Again, if you're working in, if you're working in alcohol, there's like ad restrictions there and there's certain, certain things. So any regulated in industry or sensitive industry, you need to be very conscious of the kinds of content that you're putting out there. And particularly for that stuff, if they're talking about, they're talking about saucy things in their blog, for instance, then they might get flagged. Whereas if they're talking about like sexual health stuff, like which all of these things are healthy and good and stuff. So if you're talking about health from a health perspective and you bulk up some of your content, like some of the fun stuff, but you bulk up a lot of, you bulk it up with health stuff as well. Then I think that also might shift the balance in terms of Google's understanding of your content and your profile. And it's possible to do that on your own blog or to do that on a secondary blog. I've seen other brands who will sort of you know, open a, open a blog project or something that say it's like a running website for like Nike or something. And mm. it's like a whole running blog, like a running newspaper or something that's owned by Nike and links everything to Nike, for instance, but isn't on the Nike domain, for instance. Yeah. And they've got on the Love Honey website, they've actually got a whole campaign, for example, around the fact that they've got lo loads of blog posts and advice around health and wellness and so on they've got a whole thing there's a really good article in the drum about it as well just explaining why they don't think that they should be in that situation i used to work for a company that used to organize 
bachelorette parties and this was always something I worried about a little bit with things like butlers in the buff for example or strip shows and they you've got uh, stag dudes or bachelor parties where you can go and shoot AK-47s and activity center and all that sort of stuff and so on the key destination pages I always used to worry about things like that such as the images and so on so that we, we didn't get impacted and thankfully when I uh, we, we didn't yeah. Okay, cool. Does anybody else want to add anything or should I jump on to the next question? There's a couple of questions in the comments. So cool. there's someone who asked about YMYL issues for doing a blog, like adding in the blog with health stuff. I think that it shouldn't be gotten too, too lightly. There are people who are like very knowledgeable people on sexual health and stuff. There's a guy in America called Dr. Drew for instance, who's very knowledgeable and is certified and verified and all that sort of stuff. So if you partner with somebody like that, then I think that you can have the sort of the quality of the content that also aligns with the brand and things. So I don't think it should be like a, we downloaded this from an LLM <laughs> and stuck it on the website situation. You should, you know, go into, go into it, you know, fully. But I think, and I also think it's something that can add value to users as well. So I think approach it from that. And Dr. Yeah. Drew in particular had a great thing around that. So we just Hi. have another Sorry, carry on, Ulrika. I was just going to say, yeah, I, I thought about that too. And if you go, if you take the health direction in these blogs, I think that you also have to like think about the YL topics and the EIT. So yeah, to have some someone who is certified to sign that the content is proper and healthy and good. So yeah. actually linking to so the EIT, we have a question about that. As a yeah. first step to add or improve, the experience stroke expertise, could it be to add profile pages along with quotes and signatures on inspirational posts on a website? I guess that is one of the things that you need to do. But I also, I think that, <clears throat> yeah, so the EAT is, is, <laughs> is a lot of things that you need to do and you never know what's enough, really. It depends on, of course, the topic and the uh, nature of the content how just how sensitive is it uh, how much of a, an expertise do you have to be to have the authorities to and, and give the trust to the uh, the web page uh, and sometimes it's just enough to have the experience and talk about it that we yeah. have the experience to do this and say that me as a, in the first person that i i used this or tried that and this works and i tried it in this way etc and it works this and that but when it comes to health things I think that yeah uh, have then you have to have everything <laughs> so then that then it's a signature that links to a profile page that all that profile page also links to some other authoritative sites that uh, talks about how this person is an expert in this field but also using structured data and same as etc and uh, highlights articles and books and other works that this person has done. And I think also one of the things I find that people often struggle with EEAT is illustrating the EEAT that they have. So mm. a lot of times people have loads and it's just not on their website and they're yeah. doing great things and they, they've they got all the awards and all the certificates and all of the like super expert team, but they haven't illustrated it. So for instance, like if we think about Love Honey or whatever, for those particular types of products, you have to have like, you have the silicone that they use has to be a certain grade. It has to be like yeah. you know tested for all of these sorts of things, like they're electronics. So they will have to manufacture it to a certain standard. They probably have some sustainability credit credentials, like various different things. So there's going to be, there's going to be stuff that they, that they will have done. They will have absolutely done. And the people on their team are almost certainly experts in the field. So it's a question of, of just making sure that it's also illustrated in, in a way. And like you said, uh, Eureka, that, it, that it's, that it's like covered across various different points on the site. So it might yeah. be that like they've won an award or something, stick it on the bottom of the site that says, Hey, we won this award. We got this, we got that. We started this session. Like Joe is like, these people know what they're talking about because this and this, right. And that's something that you can illustrate on your site. And I think that people, people sort of, oh, well, people know, they don't know. They just put it on the site and just say. Oh, thank you. Such a yeah. comprehensive answers. Yeah. yeah. We've, we spent a lot uh, But I think, can I, get, can I add, because I know that Anders is uh, working for Ikea. So that would be one very good example where you would use the uh, expertise or the experience. I mean, like these are the ways our customers have used this kind of furniture or mm -hmm. These are the ways that you wouldn't expect. And there are uh, like Facebook groups for that that I follow. And they are very good. I Ikea hackers. Yeah. Billy Bookcase. Yeah, Ikea hackers. Yeah. Exactly. Billy Bookcase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
like I have this tiny space here. What do I do with it? And then the people are like putting all kinds of, I don't know, Billy and whatever. Alan P. Army. <laughs> <laughs> use that. I'm like, oh, please, Aki, I use this Facebook group. <laughs> Right, I think we should jump on to the next question because we've got so many. Let's jump straight in. Thank you so much. That they, they were amazing answers. Oh, okay, this is a nice one. Nice and easy. We can probably do this really quickly, actually. I'm trying to see where my company ranks for a few keywords. Are there any free tools you'd recommend? This is somebody that owns a company that's asked that. Eureka, do you want to start with that one? Yeah, there's no such thing as free is what I wanted to start with. You pay <laughs> with something. And sometimes <laughs> that something is your data. But there is a free that there is a free tool and it's called Google <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that I actually recommend when people ask for free tools because uh, yeah there are free tools but you're you're paying with your data and if you have your companies for mm -hmm. Google Search Console for example and you have to log in with that etc then you're giving away your company's uh, data so don't do that but I use for example Trends Google Trends is very good. And you have a few, you can use a few uh, searches for in also asked without paying for the, the, the free version. And also asked is giving you a number of, um, yeah, people also asked queries uh, that is connected to your uh, search, which is give, gives you a, like a broader landscape of what people are actually looking for around this keyword, which is. I think is a nice way to go about uh, keyword research instead of just checking the search volume for a keyword, which you won't, there is, I don't think there is one free tool that gives you that, that is for free, <laughs> that you have to pay with something. Yeah, I think, um, I think that, that, I think that like seconding also asks, it's a great tool for, yeah. for understanding. It's also, it also helps you understand like the flow of the questions of what people want to know next and all of that sort of stuff. That's exactly. useful. I'm going to shout out my team here because I work <laughs> at Wix and we have keywords research tools built into our CMS. Oh, cool. So we have an integration with SEMrush and an integration with SE ranking. And as you're making your blog, you can go in and you can go, well, what's a keyword? And I've done this before where I was like, oh, it's a keyword. It's women astronauts. And then, and it was like, that's hard. But what if you did like female astronauts? That's actually less hard. I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. I'll do that. I'll do that one. Definitely had that before. And that's really helpful. And you can also, the, you can use, there's like a dynamic checklist that you can use it that also updates and does things like that. Other ones that and Google, I cannot recommend just like looking at Google enough. It's there's there are keywords everywhere, all over it. They recently started putting in example, but they, so they have all the disambiguation bubbles across the top as well. And they recently started putting in example as one of them, which is an interesting filter because that wasn't there before. And that tells you that Google's looking for examples, for instance. So you might want to say like, um, this thing with examples, Beyonce tour photos with examples, or what to wear to Beyonce concert, or examples of what you could wear to a Beyonce concert, whatever it is. Um, so absolutely have a look at those and also scroll all the way down to the bottom because there's also related searches there. Yeah. Um, and and also the predictive search. We have a great article on the Wix SEO Hub about by Abby Gleason who talks about trending topics for SEO. And trending topics is really is a really great a great resource for high traffic content and so and so that you can be ahead of the game because the predictive search updates really quickly. So mm. as, as things are are launching, so I don't know, for instance, so I was in London last night, but the other Mrs. Carter was also in London last night. But Beyonce had her premiere of her Renaissance movie. And Taylor Swift was there. So if you said Taylor Swift at the predictive decks would almost say Beyonce's premiere, certainly, even though that happened last night. So predictive text is something you can do there as well. I think Abby talks about techniques that you can use where you can use an asterisk to get to get all of the possibilities. So it just is like an anything. Taylor Swift at asterisk, and then it'll give you lots of different options, for instance. Yeah, the article, the articles are super useful, gives lots of different tips, but have a look at predictive text and some of those filters and some of the refilters. If you do a query and then you go back to the top, it'll give you more filters, more options as well. And that is replicating the search journey that your users are going on. So have a look at those and you can get some great, great like low competition actually in the SERP recommendations from there. Yeah, and also I, I like that better than looking at the search volume because uh, Google suggests, et cetera, and uh, predicting as it's like from searches that is happening right now. 
uh, and in in the close or predictably in the close future in in compared to a search volume that is calculated like in the past right who who searched for how many people searched for it last year yeah it's like so not so relevant is right. it really because people change and they want new stuff yeah and and who, who searched for what a couple of years ago new things like abby talks in the article she's she she her best case in point was in november there was zero search volume for chat gpt and yeah. everyone was talking about chat gpt <laughs> exactly so, so like we're going with the predictive text that we're not yeah. going with, with the search volume because there, there's no, so particularly if you're talking about something new. The other thing is, oh yeah, I have an article about how to get on, on, on our hub about how to get your, your keywords from your users. So search, site search, your Google yeah. search console, talking to your team, okay, to your sales team, to the people who are front of house. Yeah, I can share mm. the article, but yeah, talk, so I can share the, okay, I'll, I'll share both of them, but Talk I talk to, to the people in customer care. They yes. know everything, like yes. everything that I need to know. Customer care knows it. Yeah, entirely. And you're also your your sales team will like chat your ear off. You want to do you want some <laughs> yeah. content ideas? Go talk to your sales team. They'll tell you everything that that they that people have been asking them for. We need case studies. We need something on this. I wasn't able to sell this because we didn't have proof of this. Like yeah. that sort of stuff. Also ask your users, for instance, for this session, Michael said, hey, what questions y'all got? <laughs> we just have to make them up. And like YouTubers do that all the time. Yeah, Anders, the yeah, customer service team are absolute gold. The other thing about the customer service team is that you're not competing with other people on those things. So I was talking to Mark, Mark Preston, Mark A. Preston about this. And he said that they, he, there was no search volume in the tools at all, but he spoke to his customer service teams about different things that people were talking about with them that they needed 3000 search volume a month. And no one's competing with them because it's about their product. It's about their mm. stuff. And so it might be that there's one way to tie a something that to tie a dress that you sell, or there's, I, I had a baby wrap thing that was super complicated. And I, I was trying to follow the instructions that I could not. And so I went to their website and they were like, you do it like this. And I was like, okay. And like that and stuff. They're the only people that can tell me how to do that. And yeah. Google will give you that traffic because you're the authority on it because it's your product. So absolutely get stuff from your users and site searches is gold too. So look at home first, it would say. Uh, I'm going to say, I thought you were just going to say Google search console. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the responses to that. I, I know this person actually, and if they do use Google search console, they probably don't have it set up yet. And it mm. backdates that data backdates. So just if they, if they are going to use that. Um, the, the, the other thing I was going to say is that Search London this week, Sophia from Jaro spoke about Gong, which is a tool where you can basically listen to loads of demos and search for particular uh, questions that people have had when you've been doing demos. What you were saying about asking people using something mm. like that could work. We often do, we use Hotjar quite a lot and do when somebody's inquired or just bought from a client, one of the questions we ask people that have just done that is, did you have any questions that you couldn't find the answers to on our website? So like Crystal was saying, and, and that's, that just is gold in terms of content for the yeah. site. Yeah. Also, so Google business profile, people ask mm. questions on Google business profile, get those oh, questions. Yeah. <laughs> like, like... Yeah. yeah. A lot of people don't actually write the questions on Google, my business profile, but that is such a, um, an opportunity for people to do so if it could be you can also if you obviously you have your own store as well or restaurant or brick and mortar it's really important to ask people how do you find this or anything else you could you have questions about and put those as well on within your google my business uh, profile those questions that really does help yeah 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 you're a good consultant always going through the client's google business profile like they, they should say thank you for that it's super useful and i think people really overlook it also credit or sorry credit war <laughs> reddit and quora <laughs> oh yeah they're amazing resources <laughs> they're great as well and stuff and i think the other thing is with, with some of the llms like doing that qualitative data extracting the qualitative stuff is a lot easier because you can take the transcript from the customer service thing and you can say summarize this or pull out the questions from this yeah i think within our team internally we set up a gpt based on some of the calls so i can go into it and i can say what questions do people have about seo and it will pull out the questions that we have about seo and things like that webinars as well we do webinars monthly and we get questions in the webinar every month and yep. we can go through there and see which things people are need answers for and, and that sort of stuff but yeah use talk to your customers use your customer base great 
benefit you and them. Sorry, I'm gonna just because we we're halfway and we've okay. only gone through two questions so far. Uh, yeah, <laughs> halfway actually. So therefore, if you do have questions, I know some of you guys have been uh, leaving questions in the chat. It's great, but if you do want to actually come on the show or you would actually like to submit your questions ahead of time, please uh, do submit them to the Google. So the, the good signals, office hours. I will just uh, drop that in the chat. I, I wish it was Google. <laughs> that, that I'll just, um, and actually, we're going to have, it's December the 1st. So we're going to have a Christmas jumper event on uh, December 22nd. So this gives you enough time, 21 days to to buy or borrow a Christmas jumper to uh, come on, onto the show. Great. Awesome. Okay. So third question. We changed our website from www dot to non www dot. All non www dot URLs are indexed, but www dot URLs still appear in Google search results. Will this be detrimental? Some of our www dot URLs are still receiving traffic, whereas the non www dot URLs are not getting as much traffic as before. Apologies. I hope you got that. <laughs> Please don't make me read it again. <laughs> I didn't get that. <laughs> uh, so should we start with you this time okay no worries anybody or uh, yeah go, go for it whoever no, it just sounds like a migration <laughs> issue yeah so i think with this one I'd, I'd wonder like when was when did all this happen how long has it been on or like how long has that a change been in place i checked the hd access file and i would check to make sure that there weren't internal links there, there weren't internal links on the new website that were pointing to the old URL structure, because that is super common because people are lazy and don't want to update their internal the internal things. Oh, is it your question? Is it your actual question? It's a technical, it's technical stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, agreed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, okay. Yeah, no, agreed. Yeah, it's a migration. That's a migration. Dub, 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 not dub, dub, dub. That's a migration. They're not the same website. Slash yeah. at the end, not slash at the end. Those are different URLs. These are these are different things. I, I double checked that the, the most common thing is that you have internal redirects that are going, the one, most common thing is that you didn't do the HD access thing, the migration, the redirects isn't, isn't correct, or, and, or you also have internal redirects that are still going to, to those pages. That, so Google's still getting lots of signals that these pages are still relevant. So if they're getting those signals, take the signals away, and then they're, they're less likely to show as well. And also time. So if those, if you're, and also if your website doesn't get that much traffic, then Google's not going to be crawling it, updating it as, as quickly as possible. So if like I had a client and they updated their content, it was like a Mac, it was like a brochure site. So they updated their content, I don't know, every six months or something like that. It like, like left to their own devices. We started improving that, but like to what they just did it themselves, they didn't do much. If Google's been to your site and they're like, oh, it's the same, they're going to index the, the pages if they're not getting that much traffic to them. So make sure that you promote the new pages, sort out your internal links, make sure that the migration is correct. And yeah, that's what I do. I, I would add to that. There are two things that I noticed that speed up the process a bit. So the first one is, <clears throat> so you, you have to do all these 301 redirects correctly and match it like super, super correctly. But also then add the old URLs into a, a sitemap of its own and call it old so that they Google will crawl them and see the redirection that will speed up the re-indexing of the new pages. But the other thing is you have to have set up different uh, Google Search Console profiles for the old and the new. And then in the old one, you say that this is actually now the old one and I, I only want to use the new one. So that otherwise, if you keep the both live, um, Google will go with, yeah, maybe this, the internal links are signaling that this old domain or this old address is still valid and keep having it in the index. But if you, yeah, if you put like the migration, final migration thing in Google Search Console as well and say that this is now not live, please remove it from your index, point all the traffic to the new address instead. That's great tips. I haven't heard those ones before. So yeah, okay. thank you. I've not heard the um the the the, the old site map one. That's yeah. interesting. Okay, yeah, the, those those two things really speed up the re-indexing of the new pages or the new websites. Cool. Okay, so um ne the next question. Um so we got sent so so two weeks ago. 
or a week ago, somebody asked the question around their website and that it was affected by a Google update and what are the top things they should do. Um, we gave we gave an answer, but we didn't have any contacts. And they've then sent a URL. So I sent that to everybody on the call. And the question is really, do we have any ideas on how it'd be possible to bring this website back to glory? That would be nice. And then the plan for now is to disavow backlinks that are not relevant, revamp top articles with fresh data, work on a redesign, move the website to WordPress. Definitely a chance to mention Wix here. <laughs> and we're also working on a skyscraper page, which will be about one of the um, and we'll have as much useful information as possible, linking to other articles with videos, infographics, and so on. Joe, should we start with you this time? Hey, thanks. I think, first of all, just about the backlinks and disavowing. Yeah, I, I was working with a lot of sites and we did have we were affected by naughty links, shall we say. At the moment, I think disavowing it, it doesn't seem to have as much of impact as it used to in a way, but it's just a sort of um, a housekeeping thing to do. So I would definitely do that. And I like what they said about the content refresh for the articles. The other thing I would do is actually analyze where they've actually seen that drop in traffic and have they got... I know this we said about drop in traffic, but have they actually got uh, a drop in conversions? Because there are some cases where there may be some sites that have seen a drop in traffic, but not the, a drop in conversions. So we should always uh, be aware of that. So yeah, go into your Google search console. It is your best friend. Find out uh, the pages or the URLs that have seen the, the impact and then work backwards. Also see what changes you made. Uh, you might have a plan that you've done over the past 12, 18 months, what changes that you did as opposed to and content that you've updated and also any things like any new links that you got. Did you actually see an update? Did you actually see a drop in traffic because of those things that you've done or not? So I look at those, those elements before actually going into doing any other major changes and just analyze what you've been doing, take stock of what you have, and then just discuss also with your colleagues as well. It's always good to, to brainstorm. Don't also think that it's you on your own to be doing that. Plan out your recuperation and you will get your ad traffic back. If it helps, I had a quick look as well and noticed that two things. One was that this that there was an update. It happened in October 2022, basically, yeah. when they saw a drop. And that happened to be at the same time as a link spam up, sorry, a spam update. And then the other thing is that there seems to be a load of similar websites with similar content, just to give others on the call a bit of context. Ulrika, should we go to you and then Crystal? Yeah, I actually want to follow up on that, what Joe said. So when these things happen, I always put like everything in a, a Looker Studio report where I have put the traffic, the conversions, and I also drag in or connect it with Google Sheets, where I have put changes that you have done internally in-house, and but also where Google has does their, their algorithm updates. And then pretty quickly, you will see where the drop is and where things around that drop is potentially being the cause of it. Because there is no like silver bullet, probably. I don't think that you can like okay but do the housekeeping stuff like disavow and links that are toxic. Do refresh of content. Check that you have content for all the phases in the customer journey and that people are actually looking for this content that it, and then that it's actually relevant to you. Ask yourself if people are searching for my type of service or products. Are they happy with the things that they land on when then clicking on my results? Because those that question is becoming more and more relevant and more having more impact even on the search engines because they, they are starting to understand that in a bigger scale. And yeah, I don't know if a redesign will help SEO much. I don't think so. Maybe if it's if the redesign is also looking at uh, usability and what content is placed where and in what tonality and how much of it, and is it informal content or is it transactional content and where do you have that? 
Uh, and are you actually leading people from the inform informational content to the transactional content in a nice way? Or are you selling right, right away too much? That kind of questions, ask yourself that and, and check that. And I think if that is a part of the redesign work, yes, then the redesign would probably help a bit, but then it's not the actual colors and <laughs> and graphics in itself. It's more like the placement of, of content and where you plan for it. So that is more that uh, content strategy. Great. Crystal, do you have anything to add? Yeah. So I have, I have an article specifically on this, how to assess the impact of Google algorithm changes. And, and if, and that one, we date the changes. So we've done that. We've got the date of changes and then comparing impact on competitors. So I had a look at the URL because you gave it to me. I won't share it because you haven't. So I won't. Yeah. Um, but I had a look at it and I looked at the competitors and what, and I found one particular competitor that survived, seems to have survived, but they still took a hit at the survived. same time. Um, so, so they still took a hit at the same time, but the other thing that I found was looking at these two competitors was that they're both in the same industry, but this, the URL that, that we were talking about had a couple of big, big traffic. Like a lot of the traffic was dependent on a couple of keywords and they were both YMYL ones related to the government type thing. Right. And what I found was the competitor saw a drop in it as well. So they also saw a drop, but they had more content across their sites, much big, bigger. So they had more content to shore up and deal with the situation. So they weren't as affected. They saw a drop for the same keywords, but they didn't see an overall drop with things. So that's interesting there. And if there's lots of ways you can check your competitors on SEMrush. You can check your visibility if you're tracking things like that with, with Systrix has a Google update checker and you can check whether or not people have been indicated there. And also isolating queries. So I isolated particular, there were a couple of queries there. They saw a big hit. The other thing that's worth looking at is the SERP. So I had a look at the SERP and for this particular query, what I found and this, I've seen a number of times I've worked with a client who got hit by this was basically like Google made the site all authority stuff. So this particular URL that you're talking about, they help people manage like a government document kind of thing. So that sort of thing, how somebody might help you with your taxes or something like that. So let's say, and this isn't a tax business, but let's say for, for argument's sake and for anonymity's sake, let's say it's taxes. So let's say you were ranking for like how to file your self-employment taxes. And then Google takes the SERP and makes all of the, the links HMRC or IRS or whoever it is. And that's essentially what happens. Most of the links that you see for the top of the surf are official government things. Google sometimes does this with Google stuff, right? So where so you used to rank for a Google Search Console article, now Google ranks for all of the Google Search Console articles because it's their product. They do this sometimes. I've seen this happen with clients. And for this one, there's only one non-government page that's still on the top 10 surf. And that one is the competitor that I looked at. And that competitor, the difference between that competitor and the website we're looking at is that competitor has loads of backlinks, like loads of backlinks, like thousands and thousands of backlinks. Yeah, but good ones though. It's a mixed domain. I think the domain mm. used to be something else and now it's this. So, so it's like, an, so the domain is the one of the, it, the domain has one of those like useless URLs that like, like names that like doesn't really mean anything like infinity.com or something. Do you know what I mean? You could stick it on any brand. Mm. Um, so, so it's, so it has thousands and thousands of your, uh, links. So what I would recommend, and this is what I saw for, I've had a client who was in a similar thing. They were working in a legit industry, but they were commercial. And then Google changed the SERP to be favorable to commercial industries to, su to suppressing commercial things is PR. So hmm. to me, rather than spending money on rebranding your website, website, website necessarily, if your website is fine. I would spend more time on a like solid backlink campaign, like a solid like digital PR backlink campaign. Because if you work with a good digital PR backlink team, they will help you create content that is backlinkable. So that will give you like good content and will give you and will also give you good links. So when we had this with our with the client that I was working with, they got they did a big campaign and they had a really good PR team and they were in the Times and they were in like the Guardian and they were in all these different places. And they saw a bump and it, and, it, and it helped to compensate for the algorithm thing. The other thing that I looked at on terms of that is that this client, the URL that, that you submitted or yep. that this person submitted, their backlink profiles continued about the, like a fairly level. This other one has continued up and to the right the whole time. So yep. I would say for this particular situation, spend, like I, I don't think a disavow is going to make a difference. 
if you don't have any anyone coming to the website, I don't think that updating the website necessarily is going to make a big difference unless it's super terrible. But I don't think a reskin is going to make a difference particularly. But I do think that both increasing the volume of your content and also um also um increasing yeah you said building topic authority again that's what the, a good backlink campaign would do and a pr backlink not just please can i have a backlink hi dear sir madam not that I mean, like an actual this is a pr campaign yeah. Yeah. yeah i agree yeah yeah okay we're running at time right we had a good start on our left i'm sorry i'm doing a really bad job i'm enjoying <laughs> Listening. Yeah, uh, this was, but I also wanted to say to everyone while Mike's sorting out the questions, just thanks everyone for joining us today. We've got a great international SEO office hours. If anyone wants to speak at the show, please do um, get in touch with us and send in your questions. And there's always opportunities in our search industry to speak, actually. There's one at International Search Summit. Uh, which is actually the deadline is December the 10th. And that's where Crystal and uh, Arika both spoke at uh, in October. It's a great event in Barcelona. I'll pass back to Mike with a few more questions. Great. Yes, um, we will. I'll, I'll try and go. How long have we got? Right. We've got seven minutes. So let's try and go through these as quickly as possible. We have loads of missing page title tags. Will updating these move the needle? Yes. Yes. Okay. Fire it round, Next. fire rounds. Next one, we go. Okay, is using review schema harmful for websites that are not e-commerce, such as law firms, landscaping services, etc.? No. Hey, look at this. <laughs> okay, this one might take a little bit longer. How can I get a knowledge panel without a Wikipedia page? We already have a Wikid data page, uh, schema marker, brand searches, etc., but we can't secure a Wikipedia page work on your yeah and and uh, the reputation online and and be sure to be mentioned in places and make sure that you work on your entity yeah <laughs> and if you don't stuff. know what that is google it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do more stuff to get mentioned in more stuff i, I mentioned this no. in, a, in our preview i don't have a knowledge panel my colleague morty overseen has a knowledge panel this grates me it makes me very sad however he's been working in the industry for a long time and has written copious amounts of articles, like many articles on SEJ, on SEL, on lots of different places. So he's been mentioned in lots of places that have entities and have Wikipedia pages already. So if you are working with an entity that that does that, that has a Wikipedia page, if you're doing something that is notable with someone who is notable, then you are more likely to get mentioned um, on that page and therefore to be able to get a page as well. Also, I would say that it's worth, if you're thinking about Wikipedia and things, talk to somebody to, to help you write a Wikipedia page. You can commission somebody to help you write a Wikipedia page that is legal that within Wikipedia situations. Yeah. And you can also learn more about Wikipedia by working on different projects. I work on something called Women in Red, which is a Wiki, Wikipedia project, which is super awesome. And you learn more about entities and, and how Wikipedia works. It's super great. But also, if you don't have a Wikipedia page, see where are your where are your links where you can get them, for example. So I have an entity and a knowledge graph, and I think that they bring it from my LinkedIn page. Oh, and yeah. and and different because I'm also in in different kinds of communities and everything, and I, I do contribute to the SEO community and all of these places, they, I have to send in my bio and it's a similar one as they have in in my LinkedIn. And uh, so it's a very coherent bio all over the place. And that's what Google is picking up. So you can do this without a Wikipedia page, which I don't have. But just work on it and make sure that the, so your entity is connected with different types of entities that you want to be connected to and be very coherent in that. Do not give mixing signals. That is and my... And your structured data on your website. I think you mentioned that earlier, but make sure that it's all backed up with the structured data. Yeah, the same as. Yeah. And, and and all the articles and everything you have. I also think, so I've got a friend who owns a company and um, obsessed for quite a long time about having a Wikipedia page. And mm. they then got some bad news and then they didn't want the Wikipedia page. And, ob and obviously it's one of those things that you don't really have control of. Uh, yeah. No. So that's also just something to bear in mind. So. <laughs> um, some Make fun. sure you want one. Yes. Um, okay. Next question. Uh, okay. So Google Search Console is showing a high number of 404 errors. 80% of mm -hmm. those flagged in Google Search Console look like they're generated via external sites linking back to URLs on our website that do not exist. And the URLs themselves 
don't come from great sites and they're just made up pages on their website. Is this negative SEO? Could this be a competitor? How do I stop it from happening? It could be. <laughs> yes. And the third part? Could be, yeah. And how do I stop it from happening? So I would double check that it's not like an, from an old migration because sometimes, sometimes people, particularly if it's an old domain, it might be that there are old URLs that are hanging around from that are that still have backlinks from years and years ago or something. And it might be that sometimes when those backlink bots like Ahrefs or SEMrush or whatever, when they find them, it might be that they're they're finding them and stuff as well. So I'd go through and check that. Again, I'd also check your I'd also check your internal links and just make sure that you don't have any bad, wrong internal links. Because sometimes internal links are like you get 404s because somebody misspelled a link. So it should be shirt and somebody wrote something else. And, um, and um, so it might be that, um, yeah. So like double check those things. So check everything in, in-house first, um, but uh, check, check everything on your site first. Check check through your backlink profile as well. Just see if there's any backlinks to to those things as well. Um, and then if, if both of those things are clear, then I'd also, I'd probably see if it was something um, external. So I have also worked with a company or the a governmental company that was then bombarded with SEO poisoning links. They were linking to like they're using the domain and then adding stuff so that it was redirected to a pornography site, mm. which was also then uh, trying to infuse your computer with some bad stuff. And so what we did was finding the pattern, what kind of what because they use the same subfolder. Uh, to link to use these links to or to add these links to so what we did was preventing bots from accessing the subfolder and then we asked google in google search console to remove all these results from the index and it took 10 minutes and then everything was gone uh, and then since we had blocked the the subfolders that they were using for these links the index it never surfaced in the index because I, I think blocking is you can have them there the block there for six months or so or but not longer but th since it was then servicing or serving a 404 when they tried again they didn't put it back into the index but this this is yeah this is a hacker thing to do yeah. if you're doing seo poisoning and beware of it when you see it make sure that this is not what's happening because you don't want it yeah, you can also maybe have a look and see what other websites those websites are pointing at to just see if, if there's any kind of pattern there or anything like that. But we're out of time. Sorry for those that we didn't get to your questions. We can do them next week. There was one actually that their staging test website is in Google's index of their brand oh, new no. website they're working on. I had a quick look and basically they're using the no index directive in the robots.txt and I'll send them some information, but that was something that Google ignores. They said that years ago and then, and they don't have any no index tags on any of their pages. If they're not watching now, I will send them stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. Don't block the robots in the TXT file, the robots TXT file, if they are indexed, because then they're not going to be recrawled. <laughs> <laughs> yes very good point <laughs> thank you so much that was amazing yeah. um, thank you really... we had so much thank you thank you and thank you all to our attendees that came sophie oksana ander sandra everyone coming in from all over the world today we'll probably have uh, more people going joining us next week and if you cannot wait until next friday please do join the global seo club on tuesday at 5 30 p.m european yes. time also, I had one thing. Somebody mentioned, how do you qu cluster questions from things like Quora and stuff? You can go on SEMrush and you can look at Quora and then you can filter by your brand ter term. So if you go on SEMrush, yeah, you can filter the keywords by your brand term and then you can pull out like top 10 or top three or something like that. And then you can like get those questions and put them on a spreadsheet and then have an LLM like filter them even more for you. So yeah, do that. Right, amazing. We use BuzzSumo as well. They've got a QA. and a I love that too. Just cool. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a lovely week. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Have a great Thank weekend. You.